Have you ever solved a quadratic equation with complex coefficients? If not, don't worry, don't feel left out because I got one for you. Check this out. Let's solve x squared plus ix plus 2 is equal to 0. And I'll show you guys two ways to do it. The second one will be for the quadratic formula. The first way is the cool way. What we're going to do is guess and check first. And this is perhaps one of the best methods ever. You see that right here we have two. So ideally, if we have a negative one here and another negative one right here, altogether this would be zero. So the truth is by inspection. Now that's one of the best method, but a lot of people don't like that. But anyway, notice x is equal to i is a solution by inspection. Because you see i squared is negative one, i times i is again negative one, and then plus two, we just get zero. Once we know that, we know this right here can be factored as x minus i. And then for the second factor, because we have x squared right here only, here's x already, so of course we just need x. And then the other root, we don't know. Let's just write down minus r. Cool. And then we're just going to multiply this out, and we'll get x squared, and then this times that is negative rx, and then this times that is negative ix, and lastly we have plus ir, and this is equal to zero. And now it depends on your preference, like which term that you like to compare. You can combine these two terms first. If you do that, you get x squared, and I'm just going to put down plus parentheses with negative r minus i, and then the x, and then the plus i r. If you use this right here, you see this is the coefficient for x, which if you go back to the original, we know we want to end up with i. So that means negative r minus i has to be equal to that i. And of course, just do your usual business, add the i on both sides, we get negative r is equal to 2i, and then divide both sides by negative 1, we get r is equal to negative 2i. So as we can see, we have the two solutions already, and then we are done. Or you could have also used this right here. Compare with the constant term, i r has to be 2. So let's go ahead and do that. If we do that, we get i r being equal to 2. And keep in mind, we're trying to get r by itself. So let's go ahead and divide it by i on both sides. Cancel this out. Right here, let's go ahead and multiply i on bottom and on the top. i times i is negative 1. And then, of course, we can put a negative right here. So of course, r is equal to negative 2i. Same answer, right? Cool. So i and 2, <laughs> i and negative 2i are the solutions for that, which is Pretty cool. Now let's see, what if we use the quadratic formula? Will that give us the same answer? Of course it will, but like, let's just work it out for fun. So here is the quadratic formula. Not OF, but this is QF. Anyway, look at that. A is 1, B is I, and C is 2. So we know X is equal to negative B, which is I, and then we do plus or minus square root of I squared minus 4AC, so 4 times 1 times 2 and then all divided by 2 times 1. Cool. Work this out. Let's see. This is going to be negative i plus or minus square root. Let's do this in our head. This is negative 1, and then this is 8. Negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So all in here, we just get negative 9, and then all over 2. Okay, so here we have negative i, and this is just 3i. So we have plus or minus 3i, and then all over 2. So this means x is equal to, let's do the plus first, so negative i plus 3i, and then all divided by 2. On the top is just 2i, divided by 2, we get i, so x is equal to i. And then the second way is just, the second one is just negative i minus 3i over 2, which is negative 4i over 2. And of course, we get x is equal to negative 2i, and then of course, we have the same answer, like the one over there. I'm not going to do completing a square because we did the quadratic formula already. This right here is really, really cool though. It actually has a special name for that. It's, it's like a special case of the, uh, well, I should say a simplified version of what they call the Fiatas theorem. So if you are dealing with a high order polynomial equation, the Fiatas theorem will actually will help a lot in some situations. All right, so let me know which way that you guys like. What should we have next? We already did a quadratic equation with irrational coefficients, and now we have a complex coefficient. What should we do next? Let me know.